Hi, this is Dr. Hold. I want to go over projectile motion. The first problem I want to go over is a situation where you have just initial horizontal velocity, meaning that you do not have an object that's being launched at an angle or an object that's being launched vertically. It's this object's gonna be coming off a off a like a cliff and it's gonna be traveling horizontally only initially. So I'll kind of show you the picture of the sketch I made. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I have here, I have an object. It's 200 meters, we could say, off of a valley floor. I'm going to extend this out just a little bit. It's a valley floor, and it's going to go off initially at 40 meters a second. There's two things we want to find here. We want to find out what the horizontal displacement is going to be at impact, and we also want to find out what is the actual final velocity at impact. And while we're here, we're going to find out what the angle is going to be at impact. All right, to work these problems, what you need to realize first is that the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity are completely independent. You want to work those separately. So what we're going to do with this problem, we're going to make it just like we've done some earlier free fall problems. We want to find out how much time will the object be in the air. And to do that, the 40 meters a second has nothing to do with how long the object's going to be in the air. Because it's going to be 40 meters a second horizontal velocity all the way through this parabola until impact. And at impact, the horizontal velocity is still going to be 40 meters a second. Again, this is ignoring air friction, but most of the problems you do um, for an introductory physics class or even a high school physics class, you're going to ignore air friction or air resistance. So we'll go back to our equations. Um, we know that vertical displacement is equal to our initial velocity in the y direction times time minus one half times 9.8 times time squared. All right, look at this problem. We know our, our initial velocity in the y direction has to be zero. So we can ignore this part right here. So our equation becomes very simple. Y is equal to negative, sorry, is equal to negative one half times 9.8 being the acceleration of gravity times time squared. All right, since we're starting up here, we're gonna let our y displacement be negative. So that's going to give me negative 200 is equal to negative 1 half times 9.8 times t squared. Okay, just going to move this up. And so all we need to really do is we need to solve for time. Um, we're going to move everything over to the left. That's going to give me minus 200 divided by 1 half, negative 1 half times 9.8. And we're going to take the square root of that and that's going to give me time in the air. <clears throat> and if you run that calculation, I think you're going to find it's about 6.4 seconds. Again, <clears throat> I'm rounding up to do this. So the time in the air is going to be about 6.4 seconds. <clears throat> to find your horizontal displacement, all I have to do, scroll this over up a little bit, to get horizontal displacement, I go back to my horizontal equations that we know that x is equal to vi in the x direction times t plus one half at squared. Okay, But again, we have no horizontal acceleration. We're ignoring air resistance. We have no force on the object. So this part can be ignored and we're just back to a basic equation that says the displacement is the product of the horizontal velocity times time so x in this case would equal to our horizontal velocity, which we said was 40 when it comes off. We multiply that by 6.4 seconds. And I'll run that through my calculator real quick. And 6.4 times 40 gives us a value of about 256 meters. So our horizontal displacement would be about 256 meters. All right, so now we're getting there. Let's go ahead and find out um, what our velocity is going to be at impact. Okay, we already know our horizontal velocity has to be 40 because that's, again, that's consistent through the parabola. But let's find out what our vertical velocity is going to be. Okay, again, you're going to treat this just like you do the free fall. You go back to your equations, and you know that Vf final squared <coughs> is equal to our initial velocity squared minus 2 times 9.8 times our vertical displacement. We're going to let that again be minus 200 because we're falling down 200. 
Again, the, this is not your horizontal velocity. Let me repeat that. That is not the horizontal velocity, the initial. This part's going to be zero. Your initial velocity in the y direction is zero. So we can put y's here if we want to, just to clarify. <clears throat> but again, this part would be zero. So to solve for that, then we know that v final in the y direction must equal to the square root of negative 2 times 9.8 times minus 200. It's the product of all three of, the, all three of those, and we take the square root, and I think you'll get a value of about 62.6 meters a second, okay? Again, my rounding may be a little different than yours, but approximately about 62.6. So that's the vertical velocity at impact. All right, so let's kind of draw a sketch of what's happening then at impact. What's happening actually at impact is you have, do it over here, you have 62, 0.6 coming down. You have a horizontal velocity of 40 going this way. To add vectors, <clears throat> you're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. You need to find out what this length is going to be. Because this is your resulting velocity. This is velocity resulting. <clears throat> so we go to Pythagorean theorem. We take 62.6 plus 40, sorry, we take 62.6 squared plus 40 squared. We take the square root of that and you're going to get a value around 74.3 meters a second. <clears throat> Again, my rounding, I ran this with the calculator, so my, my values may be slightly different, but that's going to give you a resulting velocity <clears throat> at impact. Now, if you want to find the angle at impact, this is going to be your angle. All you have to do is <clears throat> look at your two values. The easiest thing to do is take the inverse tangent of 62.6 divided by 40, because this is opposite over adjacent. So I go back and I say the tangent, or the inverse tangent, of 62.6 divided by 40 will give you my angle of theta. I run that through, and I think you'll get a value of about 57.4 degrees. All right, so we found everything here. We found our horizontal displacement, we found our final velocity, and we found our angle at impact. Again, these projectile motion problems, especially the ones where we only have horizontal velocity initially, are very straightforward and methodical, and very methodical to solve. The only thing you really need to do is remember to work these separately. Work your vertical displacement problems first to find your time, and then use your horizontal equ equations to find um, your horizontal displacement. And again, you can fall back to find your final velocities in the y directions, go back to your vertical equations. The horizontal and vertical equations are basically the same, except uh, when you're dealing with vertical displacement, you're dealing with uh, the acceleration or negative 9.8. All right, best of luck on these problems.